Welcome back to Politicking. Dean Cain is the actor probably best known for his starring role on the TV series Lois and Clark, The New Adventures of Superman. He's also one of the few outspoken conservatives in Hollywood. He stars in a new film, Gosnell, The Trial of America's Biggest Serial Killer. And I recently talked to him about that and some politics. Here's that interview. Watch. And we'll talk about the new movie. Let's talk first. Uh, you appeared on this program to defend Mitt Romney and the campaign in 2012. Trump has given his, you've given, Trump gives his own presidency a grade A. What do you give him? Uh, I'd keep it in, in, the, in the A ballpark as well. I think he's doing a great job. I love his policies. I love where the economy is right now and where the jobs are. I like what's happening foreign policy wise. Um, you know, I wouldn't say the same things he says <laughs> or tweet them, um, but uh, I'm not judging the way he communicates. I'm judging the policies, and I've been very happy with the policies. But how about the person? Uh, that's not my job to judge the person. Um, the the I, I I look at the policies and what's happening. I don't judge the the president personally. I mean, I'm friendly with him. Uh, I I like him personally. Um, he's never done anything to offend me. But some of his comments and things certainly can be seen as offensive. And uh, you know him. You know his personality. Know him, and he can, very well. And he certainly can offend people with the things he says. But uh, he is what he is, and he says what he's going to do, and he says what he says, and uh, it can be gruff. Uh, it, it, you can't offend me very easily, so uh, maybe I'm not quite as uh, as fragile as some in that sense, but uh, I, I don't judge him as a person. How did you react to the whole Kavanaugh thing? I thought it was, um, it was rough. The 11th hour accusation coming out when it came out, the way it came out with Senator Feinstein, I think that was a, a travesty. Um, and didn't now, you, didn't now people you find painted. her credible at all? I, Credible? Did she mean Trump what she said? Trump sounded Did she mean what she said? Sure, I think she meant what she said. But uh, you know, I, I don't know. Pr you need some sort of proof for an allegation, and you would assume that that sort of behavior would continue. And the other allegations that were coming forward were just just ridiculous. Now, I, again, a, a sexual assault is a horrible thing. My mother, and my sister are survivors. My mother of rape. It's horrible. And uh, thank God I didn't get a chance to get a hold of those people who did that. And, and, and I take it very, very seriously. Trump says it's a very scary time for men. Do you believe that? I'm raising a son who's 18. And, you know, you, our, you, our kids have uh, talked to each other and grown up, and it's a scary thing if somebody can claim something without corroboration. If you are guilty until proven innocent, if the accusation is all that is necessary, that is scary. We're a nation founded on due process. You need due process. You need the presumption of innocence, and you need to be able to face your accusers and deal with that. There was a lot of things happening in college, um, in college campuses not that long ago where you were guilty until proven innocent. You look at the Duke lacrosse case. You look at the, the stuff at UVA. It's some scary stuff. So that is scary, and I have those conversations with my son about how he is to act and ways to do things. Heck, even at Comic-Cons now, I ask somebody, yeah, can, can we have a hug or is that okay? You know, beforehand, because I don't want to have any of that stuff. Yeah. Uh, shot my way. But the National Sexual Violence Resource Center says that one in five females in the United States will be sexually assaulted at some point in her life. There are two Wouldn't females. Wouldn't you say that's a scary time for women? I think it is a scary time for women. Like I said, the two females in my immediate family have both been sexually assaulted. So I think that's a terrible thing. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I take it very, very seriously. At the same token, I take a false accusation very, very seriously. Okay, tell me about... Uh, Gosnell. Well, I know you probably know something about this story. Most people don't because the media didn't cover this. Kermit Gosnell uh, was an abortion clinic doctor in Philadelphia. And, uh, when? In 2000, well, up till 2011. In 2011, he was investigated by the character that I play, who is the, uh, Detective uh, Jim Wood. This is a true story. This is a true story. And he was in investigated for a narcotics bust. And when they came through with the warrant, they discovered a house of horrors. This man had been, the, the clinic itself, it's an abortion clinic in Philadelphia, in a, in a poorer part of Philadelphia. And the, the clinic had not been inspected in 17 years. Uh, by the, it came down from Governor Ridge, Tom Ridge, himself because for pol political reasons just don't don't even inspect it let it be and this guy was convicted of, of three counts of murder 
uh, and one count of involuntary manslaughter. Murder of whom? Murder of babies. And so and it, after they're born? After they're born, they were live birth. So it, in, in the state of Philadelphia, the state of Pennsylvania, it's 24 weeks. That is your cutoff uh, to where abortion is, is, is banned. Um, beyond there, it could be for certain reasons, health of the mother, health of the child, you know, horrible things like that. Um, but as far as voluntary, just ending a pregnancy at 24 weeks, which is six months, which the viability at that point is almost 90% that this child will survive. Well, Dr. Gosnell didn't want to go through the process of the DNA, which is a is a medical process. It takes some time and takes costs some money. He so what he was doing was having his non-licensed nurses that he taught himself induce labor, have a live birth, and then he would he would kill the baby by snipping their spinal cord with um, surgical scissors. It was a process he called snipping, and it was so common that he had taught these non-licensed nurses to do it, and he op operated, there was there's the speculation that it could have been three to four a day of these late-term abortions for 17 years. That's a large, large number. We'll continue the conversation with Dean Cain right after the break. And he was found, they investigated him on narcotics, and they found this. They found this, and when they found it, they took him to trial, and they brought it. They brought charges against him. They offered him a plea deal, and he said, "Well, then I would have to say I'm guilty. I'm not, I'm, and I'm not guilty." Well, you know, there were. I don't want to get too graphic, but there was. You know, the babies would be born. Um, the, the woman would think she didn't realize she was in labor, and she would go to the restroom, and the baby would be born in the toilet, and be trying to live and move, and they would have to snip it. And it's dealt with in the film. You don't see that. Obviously, if you look up Gosnell, if you look it up on the internet, you see things. You'll see th there's some things you can see on the internet. See but we prison, keep we keep that out. Now. Yeah, we keep the gore out. But yes, Kerber Gosnell is in prison, triple life sentence, and one for involuntary manslaughter. Let's take a look at a clip from Gosnell. When did you start working at the clinic? About five years ago, I guess. When you were 15. Mama worked there. She'd bring me in after school for extra credit, and Doc liked me, so he hired me. And you would use this chart to help you know what drugs to give the women who came into the clinic? Yeah, the Demerol and the Cytotec. That's the one that makes them precipitate. Precipitate? That's Doc's word for it when the babies come out. When the babies come out? What would happen then, after the babies came out? Doc or somebody snip it. Snip it? He would take scissors and cut the back of their necks. Uh, he taught everybody how to do it so that it could be done if he wasn't there. He did it to all of them, even the ones that wasn't moving. Some of the babies were moving? Betty, how many times did you see that happen? The baby's moving. Is this film a great story about an amazing, villainous person in American history, or is it an anti-abortion film? That's a great question. It is certainly not an anti-abortion film. I'm actually pro-choice up mm -hmm. until the viability of a fetus. I would never legislate that, that a woman couldn't make that choice herself until the viability of a fetus. I want government to stay out of that completely. Personally, I would be pro-life. I would want the child myself, but I wouldn't legislate that. This film takes no position on the abortion issue. It just tells the story of a psychotic person who had six children of his own who thought nothing of snipping the spinal cord of a, of a live, viable child. How'd you get the role? Uh, I got the role by by just reading the script, and it was offered to me. And I looked at it. Andrew Claven wrote it. Wrote a fantastic screenplay. Uh, Nick Cersey was directing it, and I enjoyed his work as a. Who plays Gosnell? Uh, it's played by Earl Billings, and he is so good in this role. He is so good in this role that I'm worried he's too good in the role, and someone's going to go, or you're you're Kermit Gosnell, and treat him as though he was the the real guy. The way I was scared when I played Scott Peterson. For a moment there, I thought yeah. they're going to come after me. And, and Earl is so good and so effective in this because he's not a, he doesn't come across as a monster. Gosnell would, he would sit here opposite you and be like, Larry, it's so great to see you. And uh, we want to talk about, you know, uh, wonderful uh, classic pianists and this and that. And you'd go, this guy could never do that. But he would say, oh, yeah, I would snip the, it, 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 it's a really, he's a really riveting figure.
You have characterized yourself as a supporter of the LBGT rights, but you took some heat for appearing at a recent Values Voter Summit sponsored by the Anti-LBGT Family Research Council to promote Gosnell. What were you doing at an anti-LBGT rally? Uh, the last thing I would call that rally would be an anti-LBGT rally. When I was there to promote the film, I never heard a single word about being anti-LGBT. I was very open with the people that I spoke to, and I did about 25 interviews that day. And they weren't all with the Values Voter Summit. They were, I did the thing on RT. I did the thing on Tucker Carlson. I, that's what you do when you're promoting a film. This was one stop, and we were going to preview the film there. Um, I am fully for gay rights. Always have been. I played gay characters decades ago before it was an accepted or cool thing to do. I've been openly uh, vocal in my support um, so to, to tell me I, I'm guilty by association to be at an anti-LB, it wasn't even brought up. And then I, and then when I said, I hope when asked, ask me you know, how I feel about gay you rights. Are, you're a straight up guy. A hundred percent. And I said, I support gay rights. And I said, I support, uh, and I'm, and I'm pro-choice. And I caught a lot of heat from outside that. Not, nobody there at that place gave me a hard time. Most people don't do that in person. What's it like? Is it tough for you? being a Trump supporter in a very anti-Trump city. It's a very anti-Trump city. It's a, that's, you could underline that for sure. No, it's not tough for me um, because I'll, I'll engage anybody. That's the thing. I'm not afraid to discuss with anybody politics or policy or, or anything like that because I think you should be able to discuss it. And it, listen, if you have a better argument than me as to why I should not like this person or like his policies, then, then let's have the conversation. Let's be civil and respectful because I'm going to be that way until you cross a line, and then, then I won't be, and, and I'll have the conversation. I encourage the conversation. That's how things get done. Why are we so torn? I think we're so torn because people will just scream and name call and not have these conversations. They're afraid to do so or to have the actual, they will, they'll sit there and vic, like, I'm not going to tell you people on, on the left are villains and horrible people, but they, they may not like the president and that may extend into other behaviors, anything that he does. I mean, they were against Kavanaugh, no matter who it was going to be. Imagine if it was Amy, Amy Coney Barrett, they would have gone after her for all sorts of things. They weren't going to support the person because of President Trump. By the way, your TV series, Lois and Clark, The New Adventures of Superman, celebrated its 25th anniversary. We've seen a lot of reunions. Any chance of you and Terry Hatcher reteaming? Well, if I have anything to say about it, sir, absolutely. I would love to see where these guys are 25 years down the line. Um, you know, I'll hit the gym a little before I get in there if we get a <laughs> chance to put that on again. Uh, but it's great. I was just with Terry in New York. We were at the New York Comic Con. It was fantastic. Um, there's a huge fan base for it. I really would love to, to see where Lois and Clark are. Um, you know, maybe she's mayor. And, terrific show. Thank you. I love it, and she's the best Lois Lane of all time, so I'd love to check in with them. Thank you, Dean. Let, thank you, you for having me on, sir.